Welcome to what's new in UVM 1.2. This video covers the changes to the component factory that have been done in UVM 1.2. Uh, so the major change is that uh, the factory has been kind of cleaned up to the point where it's uh, completely object oriented and can be uh, replaced uh, with your own factory. Uh, so that, what I mean is um, many of the methods inside the, the old factory have been static or have been non-extendable. So all that has been cleaned up. So now um, there's basically a, the old UVM factory class which has uh, most of their methods are now virtual or pure virtual. And then the actual factory being used by UVM is a class called UVM default factory. And of course, uh, if you just continue to use UVM as is, you're not going to see any difference because it's pretty much functionally the same. Uh, but what it does allow is you it allows you to create your own factory and uh, and use that factory instead of the standard factory. So in this example, we're gonna we're gonna show you how a factory can be overridden. Uh, so we kind of follow a simple simple path here: is we take the default factory and extend it. Um, the other path is you can just extend UVM factory but then that would require uh, a lot more methods because a lot of the methods there are pure virtual which means they must be overridden. Uh, so here's a couple of examples of why you may want to extend the, the factory and use your own factory. So in, in this example in there's a register function in, this, in the factory and this function is called whenever a component is being registered. So in this case, we just add a little logging information. So we basically, every time something's registered, we log what type is being registered. And then we just call the, uh, the register of the, uh, of the base class. And another thing uh, we add here is we add a new method called all type overrides used. So all this method does is it looks at the type overrides in the factory and checks each override's uh, used bit and if all of them have been used, then it returns a 1. If at least one has not been used, it returns a 0. So you'll see this in action a little bit later. Okay, so we have our own factory. Um, and uh, we go ahead and actually, in this case, we override it right up front, right? Uh, basically, as the compile is happening, we uh, make a static call to override factory. And we set the new factory using the UVM core service. Uh, so UVM core service is another new class uh, that has been added and this is we're looking at the class reference here so UVM core service basically provides a common point for things like factory report server uh, the uh, record database and, and a couple of other things uh, so that's the central point where things can be can be set or or they they have set and get methods here uh, for these things kind of at the high uh, global level so over, over here what we do is we, is we use the set method in the UVM core service and we actually set the factory to our own factory. Uh, so now our own factory will get used here. Um, so um, going farther down this example is this is very similar to previous examples. We've got an agent that instantiates a component and then we've got a, a test that actually runs the test. Uh, so the, the agent uh, instantiates a component but this component is actually there's several different types of the component which is where the type overriding comes in um, but before I get to that let's go ahead and uh, just look at the log file to make sure that we we see these register calls uh, so the, the run already happened so as you can see uh, when we do the run, the run we see a bunch of these register calls you'll see a bunch of register calls to the components and then you, you see you know a bunch of other register calls so you know this is one of the things that uh, perhaps an advantage to having your own logging to track what the factory is doing is is then you can ask questions like you know why are all these register calls happening and are they uh, causing any performance slowdown so you can clearly see that the, the new factory is being used here uh, okay so let's get back to the example is uh, now we do some overrides here. Uh, so uh, before I get into the override calls, let me explain what we have available here. Uh, so these all these components are pretty simple. We've got a component, and then we've got a component A that extend the component, and component B that extend the component, and then we've got component B1 which extends the component B. And, and all these ones that extend things, 
uh, all they do is in their run phase they print out you know what component they are so that we can see from the log file exactly which one um, was being used for a particular run okay so let's get into the overrides here uh, so first we uh, override my component with the my component B and this override is going to take place in the agent so the agent is the one that actually creates the component right here so this is where the, that override is going to get applied uh, so first we override uh, with component B uh, and then we actually able to undo an override this was not possible previously um, due to due to a bug in UVM so now you can you can basically say the original component my component and we can override it back to the original so this was just uh, done for the demonstration purposes so then we go ahead and apply a new override we override my component with my component A and then the last one is an override that's not actually going to be used we override my component B with my component B1 um, but since we're not using my component B anymore you know, it was used here but then it was uh, overridden back to component A, we're actually going to see um, from this from this method here that not overrides have not all overrides have been used because this one's not going to get used. Uh, and um, we print out this this check overrides over here in this method over here. So we just call uh, all type overrides used on the factory and just get a, a either a one or a zero. Uh, so I ran this example already as is so let's go through the log file just so you can see. Um, so we get a warning when we override back to the original, right? So we did the the first override, which was fine, component to component B. Then we overrode back, and we get a warning and an info message. Um, and then we get another another info message when we um, override it to component A. But as you can see, the code's running, so everything's working. Uh, and then in the connect phase we check our overrides so as expected the check overrides is zero right because uh, one of these overrides was not used and then finally we see that when we run component A was the one that was running and we and that's what we expect because uh, it was set over here so let's uh, run another example so let's go ahead and comment make this a little bit simpler uh, let's go ahead and comment this out this part out so now what we have is first we do an override my component to my component B and then we do an override my component B to my component B1 so if you run this um, it's basically kind of chaining an overrides so what we end up getting is we end up getting that component B1 was the one that actually ra uh, ran right and both overrides got used right because they're, they're being chained here so check overrides returns 1 all right, let's see. Uh, so this pretty much covers um, the new features related to Component Factory.